I'm just covering this right now. This is a... It's a... Like a... It's not mystery tackle box. It's a knockoff to mystery tackle box. And there's a bunch of stuff. But this is a gem. A hidden gem. In the mix. So we're gonna make it pretty. And I think I'm doing a twofer here. I'm gonna do um, do this bait. Thick, thick, thick primer because it was just a hideous paint job. Hideous. Um, there we go. So we'll give we'll give this a break, and we're doing the um, the Murray cod as well. So this needs to get painted and then shipped off to Australia to tank mates. And that's what we're going to do today. Let's make something cool. I don't know if you guys can hear this, but the motorcycle I, I want to call them gang. <laughs> it's like five motorcycles across the street from me, but it's Friday and they're all revved up and it's been raining for like three days straight here, Jonesboro, Arkansas. But they're uh, they're all fired up. Engines revved. Those boys are ready to get their weekend started. Something about a Harley just um, adds a certain grit to the video. All right. So with this Murray cod, we've got a couple of couple of options. We can go adult or we can go juvenile. It seems like the juveniles are a little greener. Almost look um they have a very similar pattern to some of the pike pickerel musky type fish here in the states and canada europe but it's a really cool fish so let's take a look at it so this is the murray cod you guys can get a good look at that almost has like a leopard or cheetah pattern print on it um, which is i think we're gonna take advantage of some stencils to do this should be um a pretty cool, pretty quick, painless spray to do. Fun pattern. Um, I'll probably throw a little bit of shading in on there. I like the um, the gill plates come up to a point on this. If you guys are playing along with the... It's up there in the corner. Um, but if you guys are playing along, then that's cool. I like this big, almost like looks like a paddle, the way it's shaped. But the... Uh, pectoral fin is very cool it looks like it's got a little bit of white on the edges that could be the sunlight on it but uh, yeah definitely a fun fish now this is one of the largest freshwater fish or has the potential to be one of the largest freshwater fish in the world uh, indigenous to Australia and uh, a few other places on the planet but not indigenous to the United States I've never painted one before and I'm really looking forward to doing this pattern for tank mates. So we're gonna set all this stuff off to the side here. Make sure I've got plenty of room. Make sure I got this all cleaned out. And we'll put this little knucklehead over here as well. Let that primer dry. All right. So if we're looking at that, you guys are looking at the one up in the top right corner where it always is. Um, I think we're going to start with a little fluorescent yellow just to get that undertone going. I think we're going to be pretty pretty basic with our colors today on this Murray Cod. We're going to look at fluorescent yellow. We're going to look at lime green. We're going to look at a very dark, I think maybe a raw umber and a moss green. Wicked's. The fluorescent is a createx and the pearl lime 
So I think that should be able to get the job done. If we do any further shading, it's going to be in sepia and black magenta. Two of my favorite colors on earth to do shading and detail with. And then we'll also be adding in that almost triangular shape pointed gill plate. There's two sections of them on there and probably a fin after the fact. Start with this fluorescent yellow. And we're going to cover the entire thing except for the absolute bottom on the belly area but everything else is going to be now I don't know I've looked at I've watched a lot of my own content just to see how the camera picks up different colors I know that sometimes in this LED lighting which is the brightest that I can absolutely get it in here um, doesn't always pick up fluorescent yellow when I put it on there Kind of fade that down on the side. And just burn up all of this. We're going to be adding the lime on top of this, just getting a little bit darker shade. We're going to transition up. So just like most of my normal patterns, we work from light to dark. We start with that white primer. And as we go along, we add in our lighter colors and then our darker colors. The chamber is empty. And let's see if we can get you in lighting to where you can actually see well, it looks like the edge is glowing hey Casey what are you doing but yeah you can you can see it when I pull it back from the LED so one thing that I'm trying today that I haven't done before is that I have uh, I, I normally wear this when I'm spraying but because it's almost impossible to talk to you guys with I, I have a bandana, but I am trying to be very conscious about my lungs and my health. It's a brand new year. So I'm going to darken this up just a little bit as we move towards the top. I threw in uh, a little bit of tropical green to the chamber. And then I'll coat it again with uh, some pearl lime just to keep that real nice shine shimmer on this but uh, it's much better of a fade I think and we'll add just a little bit more into here put that back in the chamber finish up this so again if we look at the top of this we're looking at maybe a little bit of olive in all of this And I think that just putting a tiny bit of olive, a little bit darker of a green on the top. Maybe just a little bit around the snout. That should be okay. We've got a pretty good transitional shade going on here from this fluorescent all the way up to the lime into the tropical green and then we have a little bit of olive so I'm liking that let's get this dry so we've got a couple of different choices here and I've picked out some decent stuff um, combination of stuff that I found online and then even one small stencil that I've cut in half So we've got, let's see, we've got some of Russ's stuff in here, this little guy I found at Walmart, and then we've got this. And I think these, along with maybe doing this along the back, is really going to tie everything in together. Because it almost, again, it looks like that cheetah leopard print, almost a paisley. And we'll start with a single side. I kind of run this at an angle. There we go. Just kind of like that. OK. 
can blur it a little bit. We're going to come back with a different color and shade in just portions of it. So we want to try and keep that singular line going and then reverse it, do the same thing on the opposite side. Bring it from this way across. There we go. On the back we're going to run this. This is more of a snakeskin pattern, but I like it because it still kind of keeps that quality about it. And maybe add a couple pieces into the end of this. There we go. Get a quick heat set on this and then continue on. And as I've burned the moss green up in this, a little sepia in it. Come back and line this up again. Just lay it down the same spot. And it's fairly easy to pick the pattern up again. And this time we're only doing the top half. So as you can see, it'll transition a little bit darker as we get towards the top here. I'm definitely going to do that on the top, make that darker. And as we get that a little bit wet, we want to blot it. And now we're going to flip it around. And you can see, I mean, it's fairly easy to, to stick with what you have. Just run the opposite side there. Line up your other side. And once you have that roughly lined up, run the top half, just the top half to get that a little bit darker. And then come back along the top Just line up where you were, which is not that hard to do. You should be able to see your outline from where you were before. There we go. Because there's such a contrast here, we are going to mute it a little bit. And I want to add just a little bit of gold to this as well. Just run just a little bit of darker shading into the eyes there. We're going to heat set this and then I'm going to wrap this in some netting and we're going to coat it with gold. Now because I don't want to have the alligator clips, the smaller ones, scratch the paint. I'm going to use these larger clamps. I got these from Jonas Summer a long time ago when I got my very first hard stencils that he laser cut um, from Australia, from Lure Color Studio. So these have been around and around and around and I have gotten quite a bit of use out of them over the years. They come in real handy for stuff like this. And then once you have the main stuff pinched down and tight, then you can come back and just do a couple of little areas with your smaller clamps. Because again, I mean, you can always, if you do scratch it a little bit, you can always come back and touch it up. That's usually not a big deal. 
but you want to you want to keep it as good as you can less work for you have to do later clamp that down that's pretty de pretty decent that should do it maybe one more in the back here and we'll just clamp down you want to get that onto the bill as well the lip of the bait just help it attach a little bit better and there we have it throw this excess away don't need it now that we have that all set and ready to go let's load a little bit I think I'm going to use some copper this is some pearl copper it's a little bit darker but this is this has got some gold tone to it when you look at the photo hold this by the bill and it also kind of mutes down that real heavy contrasty transition That should do it. And while we have that, I'm going to throw some black magenta in here and just go over a couple of spots like the eyes. Normally by this point in the video I've told you what kind of pressure I'm running. I have run this pretty hard. I haven't really, because the details that we're doing on this not real fine details just kind of angle that down run that over on both sides and it's starting to look like something and I've pulled this off I'm gonna come back and do a little more subtle detailing not in the same spots as we did before in fact I think I want to run just a little bit almost like a snakeskin pattern right around the cheeks the nose and then up along here just to kind of cross texture this load a little pearl white into that I don't want to overwhelm the belly with white now the final layer we are going to go dark I'm going straight black on this just because we have some pretty decent background shading already Gonna do it super heavy. Just gonna do it once through. And there we go. start to look like Murray Cod. I have white loaded back into the chamber now and we're gonna do just a little bit and do something a little different I think 
for the belly instead of doing a full on white. Well, let's just go ahead and snip that. These are Anarchy stencils from Brian across the pond in the UK. That I like. I like that a lot. That's a pretty good texture. In fact, I think I want to bring that up the sides just a little bit. Just on the... Now I have finally lowered my pressure. I've gone from about 40. Now we're running right around 15. Flip this over on the other side. And we'll run this right here along that edge. I definitely like that a lot. That's a cool texture. Like the layer. We have a pretty decent fade on both sides. We certainly have enough depth in here. So now go ahead and add in these gill plates. I've lowered my pressure and I still have white. We're going to take advantage of that. We're going to do an edge in white before we do it in black. We're going to do the same thing with our side. Make sure that that's dry. How far back did we come on that? About like that. Okay. Just about like that. Now for this next part, I would normally use Russ's Fen Wheel they're extremely good, they're accurate, but I only have a small one. So for this, it needs to be a little bit bigger. Just draw on it like a paddle. And then I have, if you guys can see that, then I have something to base my cut marks on. Just take the X-Acto knife. Let's see how that turned out. Yep. That should be about right. We'll do the same. White is a really good base for all sorts of things. You can give things depth. You can make it look like it's more transparent. There's a lot of cool stuff you can do instead of just adding a black pectoral fin. Line it up with the corner again. Slide it down just a little bit. And there we go. And there we go. And now we've given it that kind of natural edge that you see. And it could be sunlight if you're looking at the picture. But it also could be just a little bit of light detailing. Now we can come back in with pretty much any color we want. Preferably the greens. And uh, just kind of work that through. There's that, and I just push in just to notch that a little bit. There we go. Now, if you want to get super fancy with it, you can always fan this down. That's another neat trick because you already have the edge here. 
and if you have a point and then just slide down you're working on that same arc and then slide it down and then one more time now you have the appearance of those fin lines come over and do the same thing on the other side make it fancy fancy is a good thing so just hold your thumb there rotate it spray it real light rotate it again and one more time And now it looks like you have an actual fin line there. Well, I'm going to go ahead and come back with some lime green. Just barely touch up the edges here. That's a little bit heavy of a blast. We'll bring that down a bit. Gonna load just a little bit more black magenta in here. Kind of finish off the detailing on the cheeks. This is uh, Anarchy. Bring that pressure back down. And then just finish this off. Always got to have a drop. The point on the pupil goes forward. Flip it. Drop. And the point on the pupil goes forward. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I have got this dipped. It's hanging. It's going to drip dry. This is that brand new KBS. It's not hit the market just yet. Um, digging it so far. So thanks for hanging out with me today. This is the first spray session of 2020. It's my interpretation of my first interpretation of a Murray Cod, which I have never seen before, but definitely be on a bucket list. It's huge. These things get absolutely massive. So thanks for hanging out. I hope I was able to teach you a few things today. I will see you on the next one. Cheers and happy casting from Jekyll Bates. Mm -hmm.